Hello, everyone. We, we're live. Okay. Testing the mic. Okay. So thank you for joining us. We are live. My name is Mitch Goldberg. I am with Client First Strategy. I am a financial advisor. Today, we are going to be talking about a couple of things. We always do a market update with perspective. Listen, you can get a market update anywhere, but it's my perspectives that I bring to this nice little party that we have going on that actually makes it worthwhile, that you can learn something. There's always a lesson, there's always a silver lining, there's always a dark cloud, there's always a reason to be positive, there's always a reason to be negative. It's important to have the information we need so that we can moderate ourselves, our emotions. I'm, t I'm telling you, the stock market investing, that is the worst place for your emotions. It shouldn't be a feel good day. Oh, the market's up. I'm so giddy and happy. No, it shouldn't be like that. We're also going to talk about a, a little bit about the pet business. I don't want to go too deep into this. I Hi, Jesse. How are you? I, I'm sorry, my daughter is here joining us in the live stream. Uh, so it's important to talk about what's going on today and some trends in the industry. And I want to talk to you about pets because pets are like, you know, the real deal. We love pets. You know, did you know that there are more households in America with pets than there are households with children? Yeah, that's right. Pets have basically uh, replaced. Love you too, Jesse. Pets have basically replaced children for many part for many people in this country. Boomers are also bringing home pets, and millennials. It's it's like a rite of passage. You have to get your dog. Your pre-kid dog. My, look, I understand. My wife and I did that too. We had the pre-kid dog who we absolutely adored and loved. And, um, you know, it's, it's also kind of like practice in a way, right? But um, just I, I love pets. What can I tell you? I have two pets. I'll tell you about them in a moment. But, look, the first thing we need to do is get into an update on the market, what happened. Um Hey, uh, yeah, that's right, Bill. I do have one dedicated viewer there. That's right. <laughs> she is she's so cute. Bill, good to see you, by the way. Thank you. You know, the weather is a little nicer. It's a little warmer out. I'm wondering how many people I'm wondering how many people are into watching this live stream, but I'm gonna continue to do it. So let's roll the intro. And we're gonna talk about the market real quick, what's going on, and boom. So the first thing we do is we do a quick share screen, just a quick update in the market. Look, the Dow is up 217, S&P up 1.5%, NASDAQ up almost 2%. This was a, overall a pretty good day, a mighty fine day today, you'd say. It was a good day following yesterday's good day. Nice way to end the quarter, nice way to end the month. Well, actually, the month is just barely up. You know, June is barely up, but... Um, you know, April and May had really good, good, solid returns. Uh, June didn't really do too much, but we did finish. Uh, we went out with a bang and out a whimper. Uh, S&P for the quarter up about 20%. That is a phenomenal quarter. A lot of people, you know, like, you know what it is? There, there is so much that has gone on between you know, the first day of this quarter and today, the last day, we talked about Robin Hood and trading, airline stocks going up and going down, cruise lines. We talked about states reopening. And then we talked about states stop, you know, slowing down or halting their reopening. We, we have run the amount of economic cycles it's, you know, and news that we've gone through in the last three months in, in this quarter, Q2 of 2020, it, it, I feel like it's been, you know, 15 years compressed into one quarter. Pandemic started to ease up. You know, it was easing up. Fewer cases looked like uh, the Northeast got things under control. 
And then this virus just spreads like wildfire, slamming the South, slamming the West, slamming Florida, Texas, Arizona, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina. It's hitting other states too, but those are the more populous states. Slamming Alabama, okay? Um, it, it's really, really horrendous. And, you know, Dr. Fauci um, says we'll probably be seeing 100,000 cases a day. You want to know something, a little something about this? We're probably almost all of us are going to catch it. It's, it's that catchy. And most of us will be fine. The overwhelming majority of us will be fine. The issue is that when everybody gets it at once, is, and then you get those surges in the hospitals, and then there's not enough you know, health care resources for everybody at once. That, that's the issue. So we need to just slow it down, wear your mask. This, this mask matches, this mask not only matches my shirt pretty good, but it comes with me everywhere I go. Wear the mask. It's no big deal, guys. It, it's not a big deal. It's, you put the mask on. I'm in my office building. When I, when I walk out to get coffee, you walk to get my mail, go to the men's room, leave the building. I wear the mask. Take it off when I get outside. I take it off when I get back to my office. It's not the biggest deal in the world. The thing is just it, it's actually becoming like um, second nature to me. But that's how I feel. Uh, with, a, with, with, with regard to the virus, I'm wondering if we'll see an uptick in New York because it spreads really fast. And as soon as you think you have this tamp down, people start to relax. They stop social distancing. They stop washing their hands as much. They stop using you know, the, the sanitizer lotion, stop wearing the masks. And all of a sudden it starts to spread again. And, and here we go. I don't think we could close the economy. I, we, we, we can't have what we had, you know, from, you know, March and April. We just can't do it. Just if, if everybody is careful, we'll, we'll slow, we won't halt the spread. I think what we'll do is we'll slow the spread. And uh, once it's out there, it's out there. I don't know how other countries are doing it. I don't know, but we need to do a better job here and we need to stop I'm reading things like, I'm all the, you know, it's, it's, people are so against, wearing a mask like oh you you won't catch anything how how come you could get a uh you could catch something from an amazon delivery but you you don't catch it from a dunkin donuts cup you know there's things like, like that going around in social media sorry not buying it dumb okay anyway the market was up 217 close at its high for the day nice nice end to the quarter nice end to the quarter what else? Let's take a look at the watch list, okay? Here's where we take a look at the dashboard. All right, I don't want to extend the trading. This is how things did today. Energy, technology, healthcare, real estate, building materials, financials. We had a, over, generally a good solid day. I would have liked to have seen industrials and financials lead the way. But, you know, it was a an all-inclusive, um, eclectic, rise of the market today. I, I consider that pretty bullish. So I'm, I'm optimistic from that today kind of puts in maybe not a V day. Not you know, we talk about the letter of the day, the V or a U, how the, the shape of the recovery of the stock market, the economy, not quite a V, but not quite a U. So let's say a steep U. All right. And then we'll just get rid of that one. You know, uh, Boeing, which is the big winner of the day yesterday, was up about 25. Today it's off 11, so the market giveth, the market taketh. But you can see the other Dow stocks had a pretty good day. Who, who, who was the winner of the day? You know, Microsoft, again, Intel. But Microsoft, you know, it was a good day for the bank stocks. The bank stocks, yesterday we talked about the um, dividends. Wells Fargo's cutting the dividend, but J.P. Morgan, uh, Citigroup Bank of America can maintain their dividends, and they said they will. So overall, it was a pretty good day for financials too, not, not a terrible day. And I wanna to talk to you about investing in pets. So I have pets, I'll show you a quick picture. You know, I, we, we love our pets. And not only do we love our pets, but we wanna see, you know, dogs are man, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen. Dogs are man's best friend, but we need to see if, uh, Pet stocks are investors' best friend. You like how that worked out? You like that little play in words? Now, we've heard stocks that are dogs. You know, some stocks, oh, that's a dog. I wouldn't know that. But in this case, dog stocks are good. I wouldn't bark at those. But um, boom. Okay, but seriously, 
Um, I'd really like to uh, sink my teeth into some of the pet stocks and take a look. You got to sink my teeth into the pet stocks. <laughs> I don't know where how I come up with these things. So the humanization of pets. We treat our pets like um, little children or little fur babies. And I know I know pet owners. And listen, I had a dog, and uh, we had a dog. The dog was like a child to us. It was the most wonderful thing and we we just absolutely adore and love our pets and we would do anything for our pets and more and more of our discretionary income is going toward pets now you might say what do you mean discretionary income see discretionary income means it's not necessary when it comes to a pet though it's necessary because if you love your pet you'll do anything to make your pet happy including buying blue buffalo pet food and other high quality organic foods. By the way, Blue Buffalo was taken over for $8 billion by General Mills. The money to be made in the pet industry is substantial. Um, it's not just millennials though who are, who are buying and owning dogs. It's the baby boomers, it's the Gen X. This spans across every socioeconomic background uh, and, and age group the the pet industry okay uh, i have two pets let's see if i can pull up a picture um one of them is a bunny which, and which is kind of funny because um we're allergic my wife and i and one of my kids were allergic to dogs and we really wanted a dog we tried the dog and um you know we were allergic to it so now we have a bunny and the amazing thing is we seem to be doing okay so here's my um bearded dragon i don't know if you could see that you see the bearded dragon? Let me get that. You see that? He's always got a smile on his face. I kid you not. I have the happiest bearded dragon. He, he's like he's like the golden retriever of reptiles. Okay, and I have um, a bunny. So my my daughter got a bunny, and um, he's really uh, really cute. Here he is. I don't know if you, it's not the greatest picture of my bunny, but here you see him. We let him outside. He runs around. He jumps. He pops and goes under things. And then I think he likes it when you chase him. Like you try to pet him and he moves and you go a little closer. He moves and we go from one side of the property to the next. And he's a good little bunny. And he, we let him outside without a leash. And it's worked out pretty well. We've got to give him free time. So let's talk about this. The pet industry, uh, depending on who you look at, is anywhere from... Um, $150 billion to $250 billion. When I talk about pets, I'm not talking about cattle, livestock, obviously, but that's part of the animal care and animal drugs business. Companies like uh, Zoetis, um, Merck, other companies make drugs for animals, but a lot of this stuff is getting pumped into livestock. We need uh, drugs for livestock because, um, from what I understand, there's another swine flu that's starting to uh, circulate in Japan. So yeah, on, on top of this pandemic, the coronavirus, there is a horrendous uh, flu with, that we have no immunity to that is starting to um, pop up in the uh, swine population in China and it's affected the um, people who work in the slaughterhouses who care, who, who slow, I was gonna say we take care of the pigs, but they actually, you know, they slaughter the pigs. You don't take care of the pigs. Okay, so, so I'm trying to figure that one out. So we have the pet industry and we have the pet food industry. We have the pet toys industry. And we have the high-end stuff for pets. We have the low-end stuff for pets. We have, you know, um, you could buy like a nice pet jacket for $300. You could buy one for $10. You know, it depends what you want to spend. So is, is it even worth getting into the pet industry? as an investment what do you just buy amazon because amazon you know is, sells everything so i want to show you a um uh, an etf well, i want to show you this one first chewy I'll, I'll do a quick share screen have you ever heard of chewy chewy is uh, a pet products online company it's it's not it's one i know of just because it's a popular stock it is uh, up 54% uh, year to date. Look at that chart. This is year to date. So, and I, I think if you take a look at most of the pet stocks, they've had a really good, you know, a really good year so far. And it, to me, the pet sector is, 
it's recession proof. You know, you, you're going to spend on your little fur baby no matter what. And if your dog needs to go to the vet, you pay cash. I know there are some people who have uh, pet insurance. And that's that's great. When I had my dog, I don't didn't know anyone who had pet insurance. A friend of mine used a lot of pet insurance for their dog, and they said, thank goodness they had it. But the, the ETF, this is the first ETF that is in pets. It's PAWS apropos of pets, but it, the symbol is P-A-W-Z. It's up a little over 11% this year. And, you know, that that is, um, expense ratio is 50 basis points, nothing too high, all right? And, um, but it, it's done pretty well. Sure, it had its dip, um, you know, when the rest of the market went down, but it's recovered better than the market. It's up 11%. So this is an ETF. So let's take a look at some of the stocks. And one of the reasons I, I like to look at the stocks in ETFs is sometimes I want to buy the individual stocks in the space, and sometimes I want to buy the packaged product. So what I ask my clients is, do you like to buy the finished product or do you want to buy the ingredients? It's really personal preference. It's not like um, you have to have one or the other. You could have both, take a hybrid approach. I like individual stocks. I like ETFs, exchange traded funds. It really depends on what's best for each client. It's something unique, and that's what makes personal finance personal. Make personal finance personal again. That's what I said. Okay, so in here you've got the, the it, it's it follows the fact set pet care index. So this tracks an index. Okay, you can't invest directly into an index, but you could invest in an e, you know in a security that tracks or mimics an index. I don't know if you can see this on your little screen. I'll see if I can make this uh, a little bigger. Okay, you've got Fresh Pet, Decra Pharmaceuticals, Chewy, Idex. Pets at Home, some of these companies I've never, Zooplus, I've never heard of. I've never heard of Pets at Home. I've heard of, the, you know, the others. Uh, Verbach, not sure. Merck, I've heard of. Covetris, no. Central Garden Pet, I guess it's a, I don't know, retailer. Um, CVS Group PLC, that doesn't, I don't think, that's not our U.S. Uh, CVS. Pet Med Express, Petit, Colgate, Palmolive, Zoetis. All right, Tractor Supply, J.M. Smucker. So there are a lot of ways to invest in the pet business, but I found an ETF, pause, P-A-W-Z. That is just, you know, one way to invest in this uh, group. Oh, hey, Jer Jerry's out there. Maisie says hi. That is, a, that is really cute, actually. Like, we're, you're watching me talk about investing in pets, and your dog, Maisie, says hi. That, that's, that's, like, really cute that you did that. You know what, Jerry? You're cute. How about that? That's cute, Maisie, Maisie says hello. How about Lori's dog? Doesn't doesn't she say hello? Hmm? I want hellos from everybody. So that is the deal with the pet sector. It's recession proof. It's mostly, um, it looks like either pharmaceutical based or, dis or income discretion based. The companies that sell you um, higher end food or food products, organic higher end toys, things that could teach your dog, teach your dog, whatever, products that you don't necessarily need. You could buy the cheap stuff anywhere, but companies that are selling higher-end products and pharmaceutical products for pets, those seem to be the ones that um, investors are placing their bets on. Could this continue? Now, part of this, I'm going to say, going to say that part of the pet industry is that it's defensive, it's recession-proof. Okay, Teddy... Teddy says hi to, just got that. Here we go. Teddy says hi to, that's cute. Thank you. So it's defensive in nature. Some of these stocks are up a hell of a lot. These are definitely what I would call the uh, coronavirus stocks, work from home, stay at home, work, work, not work from home, stay at home stocks. Because when you're home and you have your companion, you're going to make sure you take good care of your companion. For one of the good things that came out of this pandemic, from what I understand, is that uh, dog shelters emptied out because people decided they wanted a companion um, during this whole time of um, quarantine and coronavirus. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. 
You could check out PAWS, P-A-W-Z. That is not uh, an explicit recommendation. It's just that when I started looking for ETFs that invest in, fun, in um, exchange-traded funds that invest in the pet sector, this was the one that kept coming up over and over and over. It's the first one out there, probably the biggest. It's from ProShares, which is a pretty respectable name in the uh, ETF space. All right. So if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments uh, after in the replay. I'm going to get going because we've been on for 20 minutes and I swore to myself after yesterday's 35 minute live stream that I would never go that long again. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.